Dear colleagues, good morning. It's a pleasure to be here with you, and I really thank Dr. Raza Turova for having invited me to this very interesting Congress and to give me the opportunity to uh, present the case of a 51-year-old female without a previous histopathological exam at our hospital who underwent a removal, the removal of a vaginal lesion. The lesion was uh, made of lobules of glands and sparse glands. There were different areas, more cellular areas and less cellular areas. The more cellular areas showed a blue appearance with a high density of uh, glands, of, mainly of single glands, without uh, uh, crib reforming. And uh, the glands showed a back-to-back -back architecture with a ductal or, grand or glandular pattern. They revealed nuclear atypia and stratification. They showed a smooth luminal border, low mitotic index, and nucleoli were not particularly evident. There were intraglandular papillae and a glomeruloid pattern of growth. Um, this is a detail. You can see the atypia, the intraglandular papilla, and in many areas of, the, uh, of this lesion there was no significant dysmoplasia. Also round uh, tubules showing a minor grade of nuclear atypia and stratification. There were sparse glands uh, in some part of the lesion and areas with a prominent tubular pattern with intraluminal eosinophilic secretions. Here there is a detail. The tubules were lined by columnar, cuboidal or flat cells and you can appreciate the very typical eosinophilic in, uh, secretion in, inside the uh, lumen of the tubules. And the tubules also showed at least in some area, an evident nuclear atypia. In other parts, there were a strong reaction with frankly evident desmoplasia. The CT scan was negative and we asked for additional clinical information. We became aware that the woman had undergone previous total hysterectomy and bilateral sulfingophorectomy five years before at another hospital for what was diagnosed as an endometrial carcinoma grade 2 without lymphovascular invasion, stage PT1A. So the woman uh, was followed up. We retrieved the slides and the tumor invaded the inner half of the myometrium and showed the, uh, and showed the similar appearance and showed um, so glands Mainly, in, mainly single glands or um, a ductal pattern of growth with interductal papillae. Um, the tumor revealed in some part, uh, in some parts, a pushing, uh, um, an expansile uh, pattern of, of my invasion. But you can see that this uh, uh, ductal or retiform like pattern of growth. Uh, revealed glands invading the myometrium because there, there is no endometrial stroma in between the glands and they invade between the uh, smooth muscle fibers of the myometrium. In some areas there was some kind of stromal reaction or desmoplasia, but there were also individual glands, uh, isolated in individual glands invading in the myometrium. There were tubules, sometimes with, with, with eosinophilic secretions, but less evident. There were interglandular papillae. By immunohistochemistry, the tumor glands were negative for ER and for PR. You can see them in positive internal control. They were variably positive for GATA3 and for TTF1, and focally positive and for CD10 in the luminal uh, border of the gland, of the glands. The proliferation index was variable but high, sometimes very high, 
and the TI67 was also increased in some more bland looking tubules. Pax8 was positive, P16 fetched it positive, P53 wild type, the neuroendocrine markers and WT1 were negative. We also performed mutation analysis and the tumor revealed a KRAS gene mutation and no mutation in these other three genes. The diagnosis was of a vaginal recurrence of a mesonetric-like adenocarcinoma of the uterine corpus. <coughs> Peritoneal biopsies revealed the metastasis, while the surgical margins of the vaginal lesions were free of the tumor at the subsequent ex excision. She underwent radiation therapy and the patient revealed no evidence of disease two years later. Mesonetric-like carcinomas are adenocarcinomas resembling mesonephric differentiation according to WHO, while mesonephric carcinoma arise from mesonephric remnants. Mesonephric-like adenocarcinomas are rare, 1% of endometrial carcinomas, very few cases reported, but limited data favor an aggressive behavior, as also stage 1 tumors frequently metastasize locally to lymph nodes, or to distant sites, especially lungs, peritoneum, liver, brain, spleen, bone. So these tumors <coughs> were more similar to uh, high-grade uh, tumors as they uh, show worse progression-free survival and worse overall survival. And factors associated with the development of metastasis were, according to some reviews, the size over 4 cm, ill-defined tumor borders, advanced stage, necrosis, high mitotic index, and lymphovascular invasion. The nuclear TPI is usually slight to moderate, but it can be severe, with uniform nuclei showing a course of vesicular chromatin, grooves, and nucleoli are some, are, can be inconspicuous. Mitosis range from occasional to uh, over 10 per 10 HPA. Typically, there is no squamous or mucinous differentiation, which can be present uh, in endometrial carcinomas. And uh, rare findings include prominent stroma hyalinization, which that it can be present, uh, that it frequently present in clear cell carcinomas, or psalmomas, which can be present in serous carcinomas. <coughs> Reported associations included low-grade endometrial carcinoma and atypical hyperplasia for the endometrial primaries, low-grade serous carcinomas or borderline tumors or endometriosis for the ovarian primaries. Mesonephric-like carcinomas show a variety of histological patterns, we saw some of them, um, but they also can present a sarcomatose differentiation. Here you have the reference of the of some series, a comedonecrosis like pattern, a rediform pattern, a sieve like pattern, a hobnail pattern, and a sarcomatose differentiation, which is rare. And some uh, authors talk about uh, mesonephric carcinosarcomas in these cases. Pax8 is positive, ER and PR typically negative, P16 rarely positive, P53 wild type, calretinin may be positive, CT10 luminally positive, but it can be focal, TTF1 and GATA3 are variably positive, and sometimes they show an inverse staining pattern, so TTF1 positive areas may be GATA3 negative and vice versa. They are also less expressed in solid, spindle or sarcomatoid areas. Neuroendocrine markers are negative. <coughs> Napsin and HNF1B are rarely uh, positive. These markers are also positive in, uh, in uh, clear cell carcinomas, but mesonephric like carcinomas are resume negative. And they are MMR proficient. Um, they mm, frequently show mutations in, K in the in RAS genes and these other genes, but um, 10 and uh, the, uh, these other reported genes are rarely mutated. We also uh, thought about, we also considered, as we were in the vagina, uh, we also considered a mesonephric carcinoma, 
but we won't be able to find mesonephric um, remnants or hyperplasia of labular uh, diffuse or ductal type. Uh, also, the more bland looking uh, glands uh, of our case reduce mutations, while hyperplasia uh, don't, don't have mutations, usually have a ma uh, at maximum slight nuclear atypia and rare mitosis, while in our case there were mitosis also and atypia, at least in some part. Endometrial carcinoma can arise from endometriosis of the cervix, of the cervix or the vagina or uh, it, it can invade the, the cervix or the vagina from uh, the uterine body. They <coughs> it usually show, uh, it, can, it can show a variety of pattern of growth, the cribriform, absent in our case, solid, non villus papillae, etc. Uh, it can present squamous and mucinous differentiation, which, uh, which were absent in our case. ER and PR are usually positive, P16 uh, usually focally positive, P53 wild type. There are some interesting patterns of myelin vision. So the MELF pattern and the lignum like pattern can have single glands, individual glands, but they're different. Some at least uh, in some part from our uh, from our case. My invasion could occur without evoking the desmoplasia, so the normal in like pattern, or the normal is like pattern, or pushing growth, as like in our case, at least in some part. Endometrial carcinoma can show a paradoxically highly differentiated appearance without evoking a stromal response in case uh, it invades the cervix the cervical vaginal stroma. Um, so the MELF pattern, there are single glands, but they are elongated, fragmented, because there is an infiltration of the fibromyx soil stroma reaction with acute and chronic inflammation, and it is important to recognize it because there is a high rate of lymphovascular invasion and lymph node metastasis, and so the, uh, the, you can find very single, very few single cells sometimes in a prominent li lymphoid on the ground. Lymphovascular invasion can be, can be very subtile to, to be identified and you can also find sometimes in the deep myometrium inside the more uh, in, inside the fossae with a prominent lymphoid stroma you can find uh, small residual more glands, so we have to avoid the potential underestimation of the depth of the invasion. The normal malignum like, um, so there are sparse, well differentiated glands without dysmoplasia, or endometrial carcinomas can show an adenomyosis like my invasion. It mimics adenomyosis, but there is a lack of endometrial stroma in uh, between the, the glands, the irregular borders, and sometimes there is focal dysmoplasia. Serious carcinoma usually have uh, usually show pleomorphism with a three to one variation in the nuclear size, macronuclei, high mitotic index, diffuse B16 staining, and they are also P53 mutated with variable expression of ERPI and WT1. Clear cell carcinoma usually have the typical architectural pattern, tubulocystic, papillary, and solid, and they can have a mixture of cell types, clear, hopnail, and eosinophilic. The metodic count could be low, but there is frequently stromal hyalinization, highland globules, and evident nucleoli, which were absent in our case. Resumase is, can be positive and get a 3 negative. Um, Neuroendocrine carcinomas usually show nuclear molding, apoptosis, brisk mitotic activi activity, necrosis, but uh, at least a few cases have been reported in association with mesonephric carcinomas, like this case, where there is a high rate neuroendocrine carcinoma uh, growing in between the glands of the, of the mesonephric uh, component. HPV-related cervicovaginal adenocarcinomas also have uh, evident apical mitosis and calyrexis. P16 is strong uh, and also incites to hybridization for HPV 
is positive, beta 3 is usually negative, and also CD10. We can also consider HPV independence of the general adenocarcinoma, it doesn't have the features. Agents <coughs> F1B and F1C can be positive, also in these cases. And um, they usually show a clear or pale eosinophilic cytoplasm, not a blue appearance. So <laughs> I really thank you for this, uh, for giving me this opportunity. If you have questions, comments, if you want to uh, write me, no problem. You can, if you want to visit Italy, we are here in Reggio Emilia, in the north of Italy, between Bologna and Milano. This is my city, the theater, the churches, the park, and I thank you so much for uh, having invited me. У нас доктор Поличели на связи. Мы, наверное, можем его да, подключить, чтобы он поприветствовал нашу аудиторию, Алексей? Да, поэтому, собственно, инициировали. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, everybody. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much uh, for your Thank participation, you. for your brilliant um, uh, report. So we are uh, waiting for questions. Maybe. Есть ли какие-то вопросы у нашей аудитории? Тогда я хотела бы спросить, наверное, Андреа, о каких прежде всего вариантах думали в патологии в данном случае, и мы видели, что огромное количество разных не только эпителиальных, но и других опухолей были в дифференциальном диагнозе. Все-таки с чего он нужно начинать диагностику и с чего они начали в данном случае? So, Andrea, I would like to ask you what you recommend for for the first line diagnostic features morphologically and maybe immunohistochemically for this case and in general for such tumors. Oh, okay, so um, a comment on the immunohistochemistry. Do, do you ask for a comment on, on the immunohistochemistry? I haven't understood correctly. Uh, yes, you, you have mentioned a lot of markers, but maybe yes. you can recommend something for the first line. Okay, um, so um, in our case, first we consider the morphology and uh, the, so we, we, we focused on the pattern of the blue appearance of the tumor and we, we, th we thought about uh, um, a tumor that could resemble a mesonephric, uh, a mesonephric tumor. And uh, we did uh, ER and PR and PAX-8 as the first, uh, as the first, uh, first line uh, immunohistochemical panel. And uh, then uh, uh, we also added GATA-3 and TTF-1 and CD-10. And, uh, but, the, these markers can be uh, variably positive. So, uh, I, what was, uh, what pushed me toward uh, uh, an, a mesonephric-like adenocarcinoma was uh, the combination of uh, uh, low-grade architecture and an ER and PR negativity, and. Uh, we, we, we also added the other markers we, we, and, and molecular analysis, and we, uh, we considered that this tumor um, could have been a, a mesonephric-like adenocarcinoma. Uh, so I don't know if I have answered your question, but... Uh, yeah, cystrogen and progesterone negative and get a 3, CD10, and the third marker. Yes, and I also... We, in first line, we, we did uh, these markers and uh, neuroendocrine markers. No, in fact, it's such a panel, yeah, estrogen, progesterone, GATA-3, CD-10, under, of course, the morphology. 
Насколько я понимаю, вот в дифференциальной диагностике этих опухолей даже не столько между мезонефрикой и мезонефрик-лайк, сколько с другими, конечно, компонентами эпителиальных опухолей идет диагностика. И вот здесь хорошо, мне кажется, это было продемонстрировано. Или он сразу узнал эту Андре, another question. Was it is surprising diagnosis for you, or you from the very beginning you supposed that it is mesonephric like adenocarcinoma? My first impression was that uh, it could have been a mesonephric uh, kind of tumor. First, I thought also of a primary mesonephric lesion in the of the vagina and uh, because it was very um, it was very blue with this uh, glomeruloid features i i i, I count uh, on on this uh, this kind of glomeruloid and inter, intraglandular papilla on this part, on this pattern of growth and so this was uh, a light that turned that turned on in uh, in our head, but uh, we we had to mm, confirm it with uh, immunohistochemistry and uh, with uh, molecular analysis, and uh, and also it was useful the comparison with the previous slides, which were very similar, and the tumor also and the primary tumor also showed the same uh, uh, immunohistochemical uh, uh, profile. And uh, and so we we, we put uh, all the things together, and we thought that it could be an mesonephric-like adenocarcinomas of the corpus uh, recurring in the vagina. То есть как как раз наоборот была диагностика не с другими видами аденокарцином эндометрия, а с мезонефральными опухолями. Но, конечно, иммуногистохимия помогла, поэтому успех. So you, you, you are successful. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. And brilliant case. Thank you. It's a pleasure for me.